I've been invited to the home of Rob Reese, one of the top chefs in the Cotswolds, who's famous for his modern take on traditional English fare. By the time I arrive, prep has begun on the main course, jugged hare, which is essentially a wild rabbit stewed in its own blood. <laughs> that looks fabulous. Big! It's, it's, it's a great piece of meat. Uh, we've got, this is part of the saddle. So mm -hmm. you've got the saddle and you've got the back legs. You don't use the front legs at all. Uh, and I'm marinating in port and some rosemary. Beautiful. And that's it. And then what we've done, we've kept the hearts and the livers, and that's the blood. Oh, absolutely spectacular. And it smells so clean. Rob strongly believes in cooking with foods indigenous to the region and staying true to his craft. It is amazing how many rules we, we've created for cuisine these days, some of which necessary, some of which just a lot of to do about nothing. I think a lot of it is so that we have more chefs on television. That's probably true. It gives yeah, us a job. We shouldn't yeah, be it, we, we we shouldn't be trashing it too much. Yeah. We're putting ourselves out of work. Mm -hmm. And then in goes the blood. But I'm going to leave the livers and the hearts out. Now let me ask you a question. The blood mm. is both for flavor and because it's a natural thickener. Yeah, natural thickener. A lot of protein. Yeah, absolutely. Once the hair goes into the oven, we start on the heart and liver meatballs. Certainly not one for the squeamish. No, but I, I'm, I, I will say I've eaten a fair share of rabbit livers and rabbit kidneys, and I'm a huge fan. Let me just the livers and kidneys are mixed there. with a little pork, some spices, and then go in with the hair. Oh. Smell that. <laughs> saddle. You know, the sauce, perfect. All right, jugged hair. Mm. Needs more sauce. I have some, and I'll tell you, it's strong. But you can taste the marinade all the way through. Mm. I think it's quite unique flavor. It's irony. It's got that minerally irony, gamey mm. thing happening but it's got that little edge to it that this type of stuff often does. There is something elusive in here, if you like, mm -hmm. and I'm putting that down to be in the blood. Yeah, I wouldn't go so far as to say that you can, uh, you can taste the blood and sweat and the toil, but you can really taste the history in a dish yeah. like this. This restaurant, named after the popular oh, yeah. corn dish, Motes, is best known for its traditional soups. Honestly, you can't come to Ecuador and not eat soup. It's on every menu in town, it's cheap, easy to make in large quantities, and fortifying in cooler weather. Miguel joins me to taste a few of the local favorites. Oh, wow. See, you can smell. Yeah. This smells like my grandmother's house <laughs> in New York. I'm serious. Oh. I choose two soups, menudo, made with tripe and beef hearts, and cuero de librio, which features the outside of the cow's stomach. And for good measure, I order up a local stew called guadita, which is made with the inside of the cow's stomach. Ah, beautiful. Super, here's a free table. I start my meal off with cuero de librio, which literally translates as skin of the stomach. Boy, this is really, really interesting. There's a nutty sort of finish to this that really, really works with this sort of meat that I've never had before in any other country. Very mm. tasty. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you, nothing looks stranger than the outside of a stomach with all of those little stalactites hanging off it, but it just melts in your mouth. It's so tender. Absolutely delicious. Now this is the uh, guatita. Yeah. All right, and this is the inside of the stomach. Yeah. Let's see what that's all about. Oh. Good, huh? Good. Now you know what people like to have lunch here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so rich and potatoey, and this is like grandmother food times a thousand. And the, I, I'll tell you, I like the inside of the stomach better than the outside. Meet Joel Simpson. He gave up his career as the local sheriff to become a caterer and pursue his passion for cooking outdoors all year round. Along with his pit on wheels, he supplies the food for many local gatherings. What's cooking in there? Well, I've got a hog that we're smoking, but I'm, I'm doing the chitlins right now for lunch. 
You hungry? Uh, I'm always hungry. Joel is smoking a 150 pound hog, and even though it smells great, I'm not interested in the pork. I'm here for those chitlins, also known as the pig intestines. You know, it's got a nice aroma coming off it too. I mean, fresh wouldn't be necessarily a word that everyone would apply to this, but that's a nice fresh intestinal smell. Well, you gotta have fresh intestines for chitlins. You gotta. Uh Woo! <laughs> now the first step in making this southern delicacy is not such a dainty job. This is a time honored practice. I mean, cause you've got, this is a real live hog. This is handed down from family to family. This is, not everybody does this. You impress me as a squeezer. No, I use the water hose. Really? I have a professional intestine water hose cleaner. <laughs> Shall I get it? <laughs> yeah, that's in. Let me see where I put that That would piece. save us a little time. Now he tells me. I, don't want to get on there. I can honestly say that I've never seen a person using a hose to clean out an intestine. That is cool. See, it's like a little chitlin faucet. Holy mo, I had no idea they could swell up this. That's slick. That's clean now. Once the intestines are clean, the rest is easy. They boil for a while, and then into the frying pan nice. they go. Gotta have bacon grease. I must be in Mississippi. You're in Mississippi, all right. What is it about cooking outdoors that's so much fun? Well, with chitlins, you don't have the smell in the house. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what makes it the right thing to do. I've got to admit that they smell pretty tempting. And just a little bit of Cajun seasoning. What's in that mix? Can't tell you that. See, why is it that everybody always tells me that? All right, my first backyard chitlin in Mississippi. Doesn't get any better than this, does it? I mean, a lot of times you just can't help but have a little bit of that pig innard flavor. You just can't help it. And here, if you put this into somebody's mouth and they had their eyes shut, you'd think it was mother's milk. Prime rib. Lamotte and its restaurants have become a tourist destination for locals and traveling gourmands. Because here, in Snake Village, they don't just talk about the snake, <laughs> they eat it. So what's all this stuff? It's a snake and uh, gecko and traditional herb to ah. make medicine. And then we struck inside the strong alcohol. Woo! But it got a. Oh! Smell good. You it think? smell good though. For centuries, snake wine has been thought to have medicinal properties. And while snake is still a common food in this country, City dwellers, like Toe, consider it a delicacy. Here, at the Tando restaurant, the menu is limited. Snake, snake, and oh yeah, more snake. Prices range from about $25 for your garden variety snake to $125 for a rare and feisty breed like the cobra. Wow. How old is that snake? How old is that snake? About three years old. I'm not sure I really care how old this snake is, because about the time Whoa. I think I'm ready to pick my lunch, my <laughs> lunch picks me. <laughs> All right, let's just cut to the chase. Yeah. I'll eat that one. <laughs> the killing of the snake is the first step of the meal's ritual, and it's done quickly. The blood from the snake is drained into a glass of alcohol for a special cocktail. But since I'm the honored guest, I'm offered the most revered part of all, the heart. Make that the beating heart. Ooh, uh, beating cobra heart? Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> That's kind of milky. Ah. Oh. You're really brave. Dude, I've got the, the other end of it for you. Nothing like peer pressure to get Toe to try a little snake gallbladder. Now, because the gallbladder contains so much bile and so much bacteria, it's put into an alcohol drink as a means of purifying it. Stir it with a chopstick and, whoops, the contents break loose. Ooh. Sounds good stuff. Yeah, you're a snake bile drinker from way back when. I just have a little sip. What do you mean a little sip? Did I take a little bite of the heart? No. Wow. It's good. Very good. Does it, does it? A little bit, um, a bit bitter? Well, yeah, I would imagine. Then it's a little bit sweet. Yeah. 
it's now coming to, up to my head. Yeah, but no more backache. Your backache is gone. It's, a, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> These guys sure know how to cook up a snake. Nothing goes to waste. They're sauteed snake, fried snake skin, grilled snake, and even fried ground snake bones served with crackers. Very tasty. Mm -hmm. I liked it. It was one of the most unusual foods mm. I've ever eaten. Isn't it? Well, because it's it's just so crunchy and hard. Exactly. Gorgeous taste. Very fragrant. Yeah. When Doug Drum first opened Indian Valley Meats nearly 20 years ago, it was a small processing operation that catered to a few of the locals. Today, it's one of the largest facilities in the state. Not only do they process meat, they're also in the business of educating younger generations of Alaskans about hunting wild game. One of the more popular meats they process here is reindeer. Doug and his crew pump out nearly 70,000 pounds of reindeer hot dogs every year. Whoa, whoa, stuffing. whoa, that's not just any stuffing machine, that's the Hantman VF200. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a... Uh... With turbo stuff. <laughs> As the business expanded, so has the plant. At last count, they had 69 different rooms here. We're looking for Doug's own workshop, where he's going to show me how they make a rare hunter's treat. On the menu today, jellied moose nose. There are very few places in the world where those three words would ever be used in the same sentence. The recipe goes back hundreds of years to a time when a moose could literally feed a family for weeks. And we'll yep. cook that tongue and cut it up in small square pieces. Yeah. Uh, we'll use some of the ear, part of the ear when I skin it out. Preparing an animal like this requires special skills. When Doug is finished, nothing will be left. Even the ears are being used. Q-tip. Needed a Q-tip. The next step in the process is to dump everything into a large vat along with some spices to cook it down. And we're going to put it in. This has got your tongue, everything. I'll just dump that in there. While the mixture cooks, Doug's offered me a few appetizers to tide me over. And this is reindeer? This is reindeer here. I think it's kind of ironic that they have Mrs. Claus bagging up the reindeer stuff. <laughs> Doug is a guy after my own heart. He's starting with something found in few places in the world, walrus. In Alaska, natives can still harvest a certain number of walruses each year, and Doug's many contacts bring him a personal supply now and then. My first walrus. All right. It smells a little clammy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, look, look at you. Uh. This is why I love my job, because I don't think anybody in their right mind would ever eat pot roast that tastes like shellfish. Yeah. But this is pot roast with, that tastes, with, like, tastes shellfish. like shellfish. That's exactly right. Doug enjoys developing and promoting unique foods like salmon wings. They're actually the collar of the fish, a part that most processors tend to throw away. Holy cow. Yeah, these are delicious. The salmon wings are especially nutritious, dripping with omega-3 oils. This is fatty and smoky and funky. Yeah, yeah, and... yeah, it is. Oh, oh, that's really good. Enough of the snacks. It's time to try the jellied moose nose. The recipe calls for the boiled solids to be poured into a loaf pan, covered with the reduced kettle juices, and then left in the fridge to set up and gel. Right open. Oh. Well, cheers. there you go. Cheers. Oh, that's great. It is good, isn't it? People don't realize that. Well, here's the thing. With the pickling spices in there, mm -hmm. you get that great sort of like corned yep. beef flavor. And with the butchering that you did on it, getting rid of all the bone, all the unnecessary yep. stuff, you just explode through all these little tastes. I mean, the, the soft cheek meat and neck meat just kind of disappears. Yep like braised beef, like grandma's uh -huh. stew down your throat. Little chewy bits of cartilage and stuff like that are really nice textures. Yeah.